think that is also playable, playable on a, some kind of uh, homemade uh, game station. So you could use uh, a real uh, real console like a stair and panels to to uh, play this game as well. They're working on that right now. Okay, um, I will just show you a little bit of the racing game, how it looks like, and a little bit of the physics. Uh, I just choose one. <laughs> I like the black one. <laughs> One with it. It looks pretty cool. I mean, uh, in most of the games you will see right now is I put my music on. Is that uh, they use uh, well uh, homemade textures. Uh, sometimes people try to make a game look uh, real, like the games today, uh, Need for Speed, uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto, or some other games. But of course, the Blender game engine is not good enough to show all that eye candy. So what this guy try is to uh, to make the game not only look good but also work that work very well and, and everything. Now in this game, they also used uh, the physics engine. Uh, you can uh, well, I, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Just when it, I will just take a slow or something. Okay, one of the parts you have here is. Uh, this wasn't doable before. Uh, no. ah. <laughs> Sometimes the controls are not that great, but okay, it will do. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay, I will drive just uh, a little bit further. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The main idea was just to uh, to make the game also uh, realistic, to l let the car uh, react on slopes like you will have here, to make it uh, really jump like this. Before it was just impossible to do this. When it comes down, it it shakes with its own weight, uh, does everything. Like when you do this, it also turns uh, that way. Uh, it will the car body will do this a little, you know the the shaking and everything. And that's that's pretty cool. I mean yeah, that's one of the things you you, you, you can do and of course this. <laughs> okay, but that that's the main idea uh, of well the the workshop we do now. We would just create such a car, make a, a little track to play around with the physics engine. That's what we are going to do. Okay, we'll close again. Okay. Oh, something changed. Um. Ah, okay. You already got the files from the. Ah, okay. I made a little uh, start of a documentation. I want to uh, begin on this subject. I want to create uh, some kind of kit that you can uh, use to create uh, a little game in, in Blender by uh, by creating something like a racing game, but ge getting all the aspects of it, like to use the bullets engine right now, and I wanted to extend it to even use the shaders and do some Python scripting and everything. And that in parts. This I just started right now just only with uh, with setting up the car with the logic bricks and everything. Something I, I also want to include on maybe the wiki page or something else. Okay. Um, if you if you want to just do the same thing as what I'm doing. You just can open documentation. It gives I will uh, follow it in uh, in this <coughs> structure. I will just uh, show you the the, the basics of uh, the interface and some kind of options, and uh, we follow the same way. So if you uh, get a little bit behind, you can just uh, read that to uh, to play with me. Okay. What I did was. Uh, 
I created a, a, little, a little bit of content already. So I made a car already, uh, wheels. I uh, set up the script or found the script. Actually, I didn't write it myself, but I used it. Okay. Well, uh, this is the, the content we use now. It's uh, a car we will use for this physics engine, uh, physics uh, example or workshop. Um, what I did was uh, I already made uh, a body and four wheels, as you can see here. And for the rest, uh, and for the rest, there is nothing else. Just so, just start creating it now. Okay. So when we uh, create a game, uh, well, normally you start thinking about concept, drawing, and everything. Uh, but what what I do now is just show you, uh, just create a player directly and play with it. So what we do is we will start uh, setting up setting up an a player, actually a, a driver. Okay, first of all, uh, the game engine uh, buttons, you can find them, and they're well, it's just on the edge here. But it's uh, a purple smiley, you can click. And you get basically everything you need for the game engine. So here you can set up logic bricks, uh, put in uh, scripts to execute. You can set up the actor bounds, properties, a lot, a lot of things. We also have a very uh, important part here under the world settings. That's, uh, of course, using the bullets engine. The sumo one is still in there, but it's a little bit broken now. Uh, it's not fully functional, I think. It has some problems. So, of course, we will use this one. Okay, so what we do here is uh, we first create uh, an actor so we can uh, play with it. Um, an actor means you, you create a player or something that's uh, controllable uh, using controls um, or acts with the physics and actually uh, is uh, being used by the game engine as well. So we, what we do is we create an actor, we, ma we make it dynamic. Dynamic means it uh, will be used by the, the game engine as a uh, controllable object. And we use rigged bodies. And the rigged bodies means uh, it can turn all sides, so uh, it's not stationary like always saying on the same uh, uh, axis, but it can also flip over, turn over, uh, can do everything. It's like a spare ro rolling, something like that. Um, some other options we have. We have here. Uh, this kind of option. I'm not sure what it actually does, but it says <laughs> something out about normals. I wanted to try and get uh, a real explanation from, uh, about what it could do, but I, I can't really explain it that well, but we need it. <laughs> I'm not sure what it does. And, and, and so, an isotropic that has something to do with the friction and something like that. It's a little bit more, not complicated, but you can just play around with this to uh, make it act uh, different on touching uh, uh, meshes, everything. Okay. Then second, we have now we have an actor. It it's just now one. Uh, I think default it's just a spear here. It will always show this, but okay. <laughs> If you want to uh, test it now, you will. Uh, you can you can test it, but it's now just. I think it, uh, a spur. It does nothing. It doesn't have co uh, collision uh, collision on uh, on the shape of the model itself. So it will be just a spur rolling or something strange. So what we will do is we will uh, add some real uh, some real collision to it, and with that you can use bounce. Bounce is basically the, the, the shape where the game engine or the object will detect collision. So we can use uh, a sphere, uh, a cube, uh, a cylinder, for all kinds of objects. Uh, you can also use, some, uh, this is very important, it's convex polytope. It means it, uh, yeah. it, means it will uh, detect uh, the collision <coughs> on the shape of the mesh. 
so it won't be a cube, it won't be a sphere, it will be, uh, will be the, the real shape of the car. So that's, that makes it real, uh, with real collision. Okay, wait, I turn this on. Uh, okay. I can use it. Okay, so we uh, set up the actor. Now something, uh, what, what's also important is here, uh, it's also out of screen, and I can just put it a little bit here, is uh, the mass of the car. Every object actor does have uh, a mass, uh, a weight, where it interacts with. If you make, uh, uh, you can make a crate with just, uh, I think, one kilogram, and if, when you hit it with a car, it just shoots away insanely, so it, it doesn't act, act really real. So what we do here is instead of it will be on the fall like one, I think will be one kilogram. I don't know what the the type is, but we will set it two hundred. So it makes it a little bit heavier, heavier when it hits something, um, heavier to uh, to get it driving or to stop it. Okay. So that's that's basically the, the the part about the the, the buttons and the car setup. You can uh, read it after it what it means and everything. Now we come to the important part. Uh, Erwin, I think it was Erwin, who created the bullet engine. He also made uh, it possible to use. First of all, it was his main goal to use. Uh, I think cars and everything. Uh, to drive or to steer, not really characters yet, he's working on that. But he created uh, some functions in Python to call uh, uh, something like uh, how do you, parenting, dy uh, dynamic linking or something during, uh, using Python to, to create uh, racing games or games that were controllable by uh, not characters but something else. Okay, so uh, he created also a script for it, a script that, uh, that takes care of uh, the wheels. Because the wheels, we don't set up the actor for the wheels, the wheels would just, uh, another, will be under the car, collect uh, collision, the, the ground, and the car will just drop on it and stand on the wheels. Instead, it's, instead of being parented or aesthetic wheels, it will be real on a real wheel. We will. Okay, so what we do is um, I, cl I included the script. You can see it. Uh, if you have you, the, the one, we'll put it on their uh, laptop. It's the vehicle script. We can load that in using uh, the text editor. And you can open a new one and you can just browse and you, see, you will see it here. And open the file. It's um, it's a vehicle one, vehicle uh, dot pi. I will explain that script later mm. when we can uh, just uh, tweak the the settings of the wheels, because in this script you can control the wheels to be uh, far further away from the car on this side, or just being uh, more on the, on the bottom of the car. I mean that the car is more on its wheels, on top of the wheels. You can just control it uh, through, through uh, this script. Okay, to make this script real working in, uh, in the game engine, we have to, uh, well normally you can use here RP to execute scripts, but it doesn't work in the game engine. So what you do here is we have to set up logic bricks. So we're now we're really going to use this, this part, the, the, the sensors, controllers and actuators. So uh, first what we do is we make uh, a sensor that will always execute, always. And we make a controller which we put on Python. This controller will now uh, being able to execute Python scripts and being able to uh, execute this. But before it will be able, we have to type in uh, the name. 
name of it. Here. Now, where the pi is, tx double point z plus pi, press, yeah. press control z for Com copy and go over there to the script. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can there, you mustn't select it, just go over, just press control z and then you can uh, press control z to paste the name into so the must and pi. Control v. Oh. Most times. <laughs> yeah, most times. <laughs> yeah, it's not the official build, this one. It's just uh, I, I made my own one. I, I mean, I compiled it myself, so maybe it doesn't work well. Uh, one of the things you have to be sure about is, uh, is, an, is the name of the file. If the name of the file is different, like, say, uh, car.py, you put in vehicle.py, it doesn't work. Oh, now it works. It updates when you uh, leave the box. Oh, well. Okay, so now to make this uh, script working, we just uh, connect it. And now basically uh, it will work, but if we test it, it doesn't work because it misses a lot of things we have to add. Okay, so that's, that's the part about connecting uh, a script. But, um, Okay, what we now will do is set up the wheels. <coughs> oh. Ah, okay. Okay. An important part with this script is that it, it has a certain way of uh, finding the wheels because this script will run, it will find the wheels in a special order, place them on, the, on a place and when you start the game engine, the wheels will drop and the car will just drop on it. And that's, that, that's all. So that's what the script does. And when you uh, drive, it will update uh, the, the wheels by rotating or moving, turning or whatever. And when it hits, it also goes up and down here between uh, uh, a range. So what we do is we have to set up the wheels uh, the right way. Is that... Um, the script will execute the, the wheels in order like this. We have here wheel 1, 2, 3 and 4. Of course it starts with 0 because what's easier to write a script like that. And we'll go in that way. So what we do is we have to make sure we do the same. So now it doesn't matter but it, it matters when we add uh, the actuators with their names because it's trying to find their names of uh, the logic tricks. So what we do now is we start with the wheels and we add uh, an actuator, actuator here and we change to um, a visibility actuator, actuator. It just means that this wheel will always be visible. It's just an actuator um, it will be uh, used to uh, to get the script running. Um, and of course, you give this the name as uh, the same order as in the in the image. So you type in wheel zero, and then you can just close it. And that's what you do with all the wheels. So this wheel to visibility and put in wheel one. What you can do is now, if you have done that, you just select all the wheels. And finally, you select uh, the car body. Now, the important thing is we have to uh, connect those wheels to the script. So, uh, what we won't connect the meshes like parenting them, but we just connect uh, the wheels logic brick to the, the logic bricks of the car. 
So it's just uh, only connected uh, using uh, the logic bricks. Now we have selected all the wheels and finally selected the body. You can press here uh, the button cell and it will show all the logic bricks of the all select selections you have done. So you have one uh, car, uh, wheel zero, one, two, and three. You can close this just to make it look uh, more clean. And we cannot connect these wheels to the script. Here's a line that, that, that says, I won't explain the complete script, but just show you where it calls. You will see here, it will uh, make a, ver uh, a variable to find uh, an actuator named wheel 3. Okay, we have wheel 3 here. And this is the same for 2, 1 and 0. So that makes the script already a little bit running. Now, to, ma to make the script real running, we need some properties to set up just uh, to execute the script because when you execute it now, it will give all kinds of errors. It can find this variable, it can find this. So what we do is uh, we set up that. And in, in, in Blender Game Engine, when you make Python scripts, you have a problem. You can't make uh, loops in the script. So the script will execute downwards and if you have uh, uh, some kind of property you want to uh, update every time, you can put it in the script. You have to put it uh, in the logic bricks. So the main, the, the, the loop you can have is just the loop you have uh, with the logic bricks or something. So if you have a script that uh, takes care of a property by uh, adding each time when it runs uh, one point or one integer, uh, you have to set up the, those properties uh, within logic bricks and not within the script. So for this for this tutorial we need in total six properties and or variables and we can create them by using this one. When you press this you add one and you create a, a variable and here you can choose uh, all types timer for time, strings, text, yeah. floats, integer, and booleans. For this time, we will create around, uh, I think there was six we need. Okay, first of all, we need um, an integer. <coughs> if you add one integer, and you call it, I think it will sit off in it. I'm not sure I have to look it afterwards. <laughs> in it. This will just uh, take care of the script is being running uh, or not. Okay, so now we make a, a second one and we call this shit. These names are just the names you can use in your script to, uh, to use these variables and this is the value you can press press these buttons to uh, to see the them actually in the screen, so you can read the some kind of printing info. Okay, so we have already two, and in, in total we need six. So I add some more. I will add four more. Um, I have to look at what we have. One for the steer. It will take care of uh, the the wheels being turned like a, a real car. We have force, that's the speed of the car. We have friction, so uh, that's the, the, the way the car, the car acts. You can make this more or less. And we have X. I'm not sure what this means, the X, but just add it. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so we need one for the stair. One for the force, boat floats, because we need uh, some really small numbers for that. 
we need one for the friction and one for the X. I'm not sure if it's all yeah, floats. Okay, so that's that's all you have to do to make this script running. So now uh, when we run the script, it will basically uh, give no errors, if I'm right. So we can just test it right now. See if it works. And just add uh, a ground below it to just show uh, if, it, if it works or not. When you just put your mouse in the window, press P, you can start the game engine and you can see what it does. Right now it will just <laughs> fall down and do nothing else. So there is probably something not wrong, uh, not right. Um, just make sure what, what. E, 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 e. Hmm? No, no, no. You just can keep them as a mesh. It sounds strange, but the the script the script takes care of it. Normally. Hmm? Normally. Yeah, yeah. Normally it does. Yes. So what what what, what what's what's right now? Just to check what what's going. On. Uh, normally it goes. I tried it a lot of times at home and it works, but. <laughs> <laughs> now during this it doesn't work so I'm now ch checking what, what's wrong with it hmm, seems to be uh, yeah it's an old version of Blender I just accidentally found <laughs> a wrong one so I saved this yeah I just saved this So I was not running the right one. Okay. I will change the uh, team just to make it look normal. Okay. Now let's try it this here. Ah. <laughs> so that was just uh, the wrong version of Blender. <laughs> I need to clean up my computer here. But okay, it works right now. You can see basically the idea what it, what happens. If you press the game engine, the wheel drops down, the wheels drop down, the car drops on it, and it's done. So basically now you have already a car. And it works. It's full functional with the physics and everything. And how it takes care about the wheels? Uh, the script takes care about the positions and everything, so it just calculates what's, what's needed, uh, uh, what, what's the space needed between the car and the wheels and exit po position. We can all find that later on we will, uh, we will try to uh, mess around with that uh, script to show it. But okay, so when you press it now, it, sh it should work if you're uh, doing this with me. So that's what we want. Okay. Now there is something else I already did that I can show you. Uh, this card is, is, is now the collision shape. And as we see you when you press this mode, you see that the wheels are inside this shape. So what happens if this wheel also uh, detects collision, it will just fly away. So something I already did but it's really important to know is just turn off turn off uh, collision here. So you can do that by going into texture mode. Get here a button. Well, normally it's on. Ah yeah, here. You have here a button that's normally on and you have to turn it off. And then you press this button Draw copy, uh, copy draw mode to enable it. I can show you what happens if I don't, and it will just go crazy. See, the wheel disappears. It just shoots away with an enormous speed. You don't, you don't see it. So 
but that's a problem and then after a lot of trouble comes but <laughs> okay so that that's that's something you don't have to do uh, you don't want to do so always make sure if uh, a mesh is intersecting uh, the shape of an editor mesh while it's an actor you have to make care the, the collision is turned off. This is also important when you make something like an FPS shooter on a character that uh, surrounds by a shape that collect, uh, con yeah, detects collision. Make sure the shape is not doing collision as well. So it <laughs> will go crazy. I have to start this again. So that's how crazy it can, uh, can get. Uh, I will change this back again. <coughs> uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so what we do now is it's now just an uncontrollable object. So we will now add controls to, uh, to make it move forwards and backwards. So what we do is we create something here, make a sensor, a new one and we change it to uh, a keyboard sensor. Keyboard is, it means that it uh, just uh, catches the advanced system of your uh, keyboard. You can also choose uh, a mouse here. Or whatever. Okay, we just choose keyboard. And here you can just press a key you want to use. So in this case I uh, use uh, the Wii key. Or you can just uh, use uh, up arrow. You just click, press a button, and what I have to do with it. Okay. For this sensor, we also need to push uh, the button to make it always uh, give a pulse. So right now, when you push uh, the up arrow, it will give a pulse, and after it, it will stop. And this script needs that uh, the speed, like when we press this button, it sets the speed to uh, a value, and if you release the button, it will stay that value because it adds. So what we now have to do is we keep saying, okay, when you uh, second control we make so that when you uh, release the button, it will reset the, the property of the speed uh, back to zero and stop moving the car. So it will just go continue with its speed and then slow down and everything. So we turn on pulse mode. And in this case, this will be our... Uh, I just changed back to Wii. Uh, our key to reset our uh, uh, speed back to uh, zero. Okay, I give this one a name. Yep, two. And I connect it to a controller. Controllers are just objects that use, are used to connect sensors with logic bricks, like I do here, or connect them with a script. Okay, what we do now is we create uh, an actuator, actuator here and we use uh, a property one. So what we do is actually it, you can with this actuator you can set properties to this. So like if I have steer here and I press uh, the, the button V, the V button, W button, if I say it right. <laughs> It will. It can assign uh, maybe uh, ten or hundred or something. So we do make it assign property will be thousand. Sounds a lot, but oh no, um, force. The property will be force. So in this case, we use the Wii key, uh, or our plan is to use that key to move the car forwards. So we uh, use the force and. When we press that key, we will set it to 1000. And then we can connect it. And we use and give it a name. Uh, well, well, that's better. Okay. Now we make a second one. Again, the Wii key, uh, W key. Um, put on also uh, the pulse mode and in this one we don't put on invert because this one 
Uh, normally an, a sensor activates when you press the button and when you press this button invert it will always be uh, executed even you, when you don't press so let's say uh, we press the wii key, uh, uh, w key to move it forwards and if we don't press it anymore it resets it back to something or, or uh, well we use it I can close this one as well. And again, we add a property. Assign. Property force. And this. Can I connect it? I have to check how I'm, <laughs> if I'm doing it all right. Yeah. Okay. So we can, right now, we, we could test it. Oh, wait, first I do this. If it's turned off, okay. To make sure that it doesn't crash again. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's doing something strange. Uh, hmm? No, no, no. I think it's it's my problem right now. I, I did something not not, not correct. I, I know why. Because it's uh, it's just something stupid. This this one is always executing, and I put it to one thousand. So yeah, that, that's right. It start driving. Okay, and this one would be one thousand. If I'm right, it should be. Go well now. Ah, okay. Look. Up. Wrong way. <laughs> the wrong way. So we can put it to 1000. And it will drive the right way. Wrong way. And fall off. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, now it, it's controllable, but not completely. It just drives forwards. So, what we do now is we select the car again. Add some more. The S key. I use the 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 gamers <laughs> the gamers way of uh, of controlling it. And also make sure you give uh, the the sensors uh, sometimes names because when you create a game, it can get really huge huge with all these kind of logic bricks. And sometimes if if you don't work uh, on it for like two or three days. Like oh, what was the? I don't know. <laughs> so it's really, uh, really important to uh, to add some some names. Okay. Now we make a property again, and now we do just a different thing. This was minus. So we make this one plus. Mm, this one is. Forwards, backwards. Let me test it. You can drive forwards and backwards. And now you can already see something of the physics, and that's just uh, the way the car acts when it gets more speed and when it tries to uh, get in reverse. You can see the car already doing this, and that's that's pretty cool. Can also if you if we do this, see, drops just perfect. So it, it's when you have a, la a, a landscape with a lot of hills, uh, slopes, everything. It's right now. It will be okay. Okay, so that's for the forwards and backwards. So the rest will be pretty easy as well if you think about to make it turn, just uh, add something to steering. But before we're going to do, do that, we have also something we want that's when you steer <coughs> and, and you stop, the wheels turn back. You do it again, the wheels turn just back in normal position. And when they do that, they also uh, make the shape of turning. So when you do steer a lot, 
there's a lot of uh, you know turn, and when you start to release it, it just starts to go straight again. So what we do? Where is this? So this is basically this part for the ones following it. Yeah, it, 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 it can be uh, very busy here. Yeah, it's just a preview of what we're going to do next. <laughs> okay, so what we do now is we just add the steering the same way, just making some controls. Keyboard, for A for right. And the keyboard. Left, oh, this one. I'm doing wrong. And also press the pulse mode. Very important. Add two controllers. And also we need to use the the, the property here for uh, steering. So we'll change that. And in this case we. I think it was plus small, uh, just a small fellow will be okay. Okay, so we can try now what happens if we use the keys. We see that the, I can zoom in a little bit. It will now just turn the car straight in one direction. But it doesn't do anything else than just turn. So what we want is when we press uh, a key to go right, it just when you release the key, it turns back the wheels in normal position, so it looks more. Right. Okay. <coughs> so we'll go to the next part. Okay, th this part is a little bit heavy with, because we need to uh, set up a, lo a lot of um, logic bricks to control uh, these kind of things. So what we do now is the, 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 the wheels are in a certain position and when you release the button it will just, when it uh, detects when you do that, it will just add something to the stair again to put it back in position so until it's normal and the same way to the, the right steering and everything. Oh, and this this one I have to add, not not assign. I changed that, so now it will just do the same thing, <laughs> and wow, will now rotate. So that's pretty strange. Ah. So we also have to set a limit of the way it steers. <coughs> okay. So what we do is. First we uh, make a limit for uh, the steering, so what we do is uh, we make this also pulse mode. An interval, so property, this, with this sensor you always uh, assign, uh, access the properties and you can do all kind of things like an if-else statement with some kind of uh, thing in it. So in this case we use uh, interval, so you can check if a certain property is between uh, a 0 or 10 and when it's between 0 and 10 you can make it do something. So in this case it will be the property steer to check and I think, oh, I don't know all the values at my head, ah, that was again. We wanted to check it between 0, uh, min minus 1 and 0. Because we have floats, we have uh, quite sh uh, small numbers. You can see that also here, very small. So we can just use uh, normal integers with floats. Okay, do all the way the same. 
Also, make sure you uh, you uh, you put the property sensors here, because if I'm right, you, if you put in uh, put it on here and you don't connect it with the rest uh, in the same uh, in the same thing as where the properties are set, it can't access the, the properties. So if you make on the wheels uh, like this completely on the wheels, it can't as, uh, access the properties uh, on your car. So you have to make always work. Uh, on the car itself. And we make properties. I think was the sign. And I'm not sure about this one. Oh, it's bad. Okay, so let's get a better view of this. And test it. Hmm. No, I'm not not really done with uh, with setting it. I'm trying to yes, I check it. Okay, so it needs more to to do this. So now we have um, it's it's just a check. Hmm. Now we need to add an editor one. Stay between. And again, a property at steer. Okay. Let's see what effect is now. I'm oh, still not working. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, I will just close this. I will continue to continue to the the further part. I think it was just because we set up right now to check between uh, a special value and to do something, but um, it it checks now, but it, I th I think it doesn't do anything else. So we just have to create an editor group of logics to uh, to do actually change back uh, the wheels to the position as they should be when you don't stir. Here. So we make uh, again a uh, property sensor with this one. Uh, I'm not sure what this one will be. Or the interval. Right. Uh, so I think it's was zero. I, the, just the values I type now, it's just I've been trying to uh, to test it bef uh, before I did this workshop so I know a little bit what the settings are. Normally when you create a game you don't know anything uh, about values, they are not set. So if it depends how big your object is, uh, how big your mesh is and how, uh, how fast you want to turn it. So it's just tweaking. I already did that but you can better is to just buy uh, to, uh, to create your game and afterwards check uh, everything. Oh. <coughs> so, put this property, this time we assign. And I'm not sure what it's for there. I'll make it over here. <coughs> I'm right, it, it will be working right now. Or it should be working. Ah, kijk. Ah, look, that, that, that's the point I wanted to uh, to go to. 
Now when you press the button, normally it would stand like this and don't do anything. Now when I release the button, it would just uh, put back the wheels in position like it should be. Because when you have a certain force and you stir and you release a stair, it just turns it back to go in a straight line. So this is what I do. So the first property is just check if there is uh, some value and this one will uh, just when it's in, in some kind of range it will just add every second uh, this value and turn back the car wheels. So now we have only the one, one side, the other one isn't working, see it still goes crazy. What we do is make again the other side cool. And the other steer. And this value is just to the other side. See now it does for both sides. Okay, so we can test our car a little bit more. Now uh, this script takes also care uh, with just the force only. So when the wheel is turned, it just checks ah the, the wheels uh, this this uh, value turned. So we go that way a little bit. So you don't have to apply forces to turn or. Uh, to do that steering, it will just do it itself. See when you when you just turn, it just turns around. <laughs> okay, if you if you push it too much, it will just. I think it will it will shake a little, but okay, it will be fixed later. No, it's it's not. Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so it works <laughs> for this part. So now basically we have set up the, the car completely uh, to do, uh, well, all, all the physics. So we now we can just go crazy with uh, physics, putting some uh, crates in it and everything, make a track or uh, do something else. Uh, when you, this, so when you have uh, done this, I, w I will just show you to create some track and everything. Um, but I did not cover to, to put something like uh, to get the speed displayed in something, but basically you can just make yourself totally crazy, uh, going crazy with this. You can just add speed, uh, everything. Yeah, just li like, like in the other game. Okay, so what we'll do now is I will just save first before it crashes or something. And um, I made some models before. Example. Ah. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Again, the wrong blender. I'm not sure how you can access the desktop. This is something I don't like about Windows. <laughs> okay. Huh? The desktop is in the document and settings folder on Drive C. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Normally you, you had something like here that's already the, the ah here it's already here. Okay, that's that's better. So uh, I made already some uh, some objects. I also went crazy here, but uh, I don't show that there. I made some objects here. Now, uh, what you can do with the game engine is also you can just separate a file, uh, make objects in there. 
but you can load those objects dy dynamically. You can do that just by appending, but not during the, the time the game engine runs. So what I do normally is I create a library of objects, so uh, I can append them. In this case, I didn't give them uh, a good name, so this will be create I've made just uh, just an object. I will offer oh, safety here, otherwise it won't work. Um, append. Example, equals object. And we have here, we have the crate. Ah, it's here. can just put it to an editor layer because it was also in a uh, layer tree yeah. okay so now we have here uh, the crate you can also do the same to, uh, to make this uh, uh, detect collision with uh, the car normally it does but it doesn't do anything else than just uh, the car drives against it and that's, that's it but we want, I want to make uh, something that's interactable. So you, when you drive against it, it will just roll or turn or whatever. So what you do is you make an actor of that as well. So I already did a part, so I will skip it. So you make an actor <coughs> dynamic for make it interact. Rigged bodies to make it turn all sides. And this is also important, no sleeping. It means when you have an, an object and it drops in the game and you just drop on the ground, it will start just after a few seconds, it starts uh, stopping um, detect the, 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 the physics, just to make it steady and to make your, uh, your game also, or the, per the performance is, then, is better then. So I turn this off right now because it could be that when I drive against it and it rolls all the, the good way as you want it, it will just stop after a few seconds and you get very, really strange results. Um, so what I do here is front view. Also important thing is that when you, you uh, use such objects I never put them direct, uh, directly on the ground because uh, when you do that uh, strange things can happen like uh, they do this, you know. <laughs> they 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 just jump in the uh, jump in the air, of or or just fall through the ground. So the best thing is just to put them a little bit above. So when you do it, it drops perfect. And that's the physics. I was okay. Uh, something important here. What I forgot to tell you is the bound as well. In this case, we uh, we used uh, the box, but when I use per fur. Uh, strange things. You will see it will just act like a, a sphere because when a sphere drops like this it will it, it won't roll. So when you make the box uh, and turn it a little bit, okay. It will fall like a box. Okay, so what we do is we uh, go crazy with this. We had uh, nice big wall Let's see uh, in the middle make it gray you can make it as uh, high as you want of course there is uh, some kind of performance but well uh, th this won't be a big problem okay then I will Select all these things. Ah, and put them a little bit in front of the car. I hope it will be fine. Put it a little bit lower. So when it drops, perfect. One big wall. Now, uh, I'll set up the camera a little, or it's something. Uh, when now I just changed uh, the position I want to look at it. But if you want to view it uh, from uh, the camera view, 
you just can change it here to camera you'll see it it's something like this I will change the view a little a little bit strange okay okay so let's let's hit the wall so that that's something that that what the bullet physics engine does before it was just impossible to do this it was possible but the, the wall just collapsed, got, went crazy because uh, it was detecting too much collision. And now with the bullet physics engine, physics engine, uh, Erwin did a great job doing uh, this kind of uh, physics. Also, uh, if you want to do something like uh, rendering and modeling and stuff, you can also start the game engine and with some kind of setup you can record uh, the physics and turn them in real animation. So if you uh, want in an animation a car driving against a wall like a uh, box of boxes, you could probably make that uh, into the game engine. It will run really slow because it will be a high, uh, high, uh, a high polygon uh, mesh. But when it's finished, you have you could record it to uh, to an animation. That's really useful. So now it just you can just drive against it, and that's it. Okay, it's, it's quite nice. You also see that it detects the car only. So when I drive here, the nose of the car is through it. Now the window starts, it will push the rest. That's quite, quite nice. I can do a lot of crazy things. You can make a, a game like where you uh, build a big tower of objects and you push them or get them out of it. Sometimes when I saw something like this, I think they fall a little bit too slow and they yeah. act a little bit too slow. As yeah. Well. You, can, you can increase the mass. Yeah, that's that's one of yeah that's one of the things you you can increase the mass uh, the mass of it, but there is also uh, something I didn't told you is 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 the gravity. You can here set the gravity of your world. And normally it's set to the same as uh, our planet, but you can increase it. But it also affects in this uh, uh, the, the the speed of your car, except animation, of course. But or uh, all the things that are just uh, done by motion, it will all get changed because there is more gravity, so it's harder to get forwards to steer and that kind of things. So you have to take care about that. But yes, there it's it's a little bit uh, hard to find a good way to make the when you create a game to make it look real. Or to make it look not, uh, I mean, yeah, strange. Like when he says uh, the grades fall really slow. Yeah, there is. You can tweak it, but it's always a little bit hard to get to find uh, to find the good uh, value of that. But yes, you can just do that. Because when I take this top one, I can just show you uh, when I take this one, and I go to um, to settings here. It's already set to uh, something. I already did that. But let's say uh, when I put it to uh, the same. Uh, well, okay, 1,000. That's that's uh, very very high. So when we watch this now, in this mode, it will probably fall through <laughs> it. See, because it's too heavy. And that that that's something. But it falls perfect now. I mean, it's better than just being very light. <coughs> no, I don't think so. I, I, I could try. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit harder. You see, I have to push a lot of times to uh, to, <laughs> to push it off. But, well, it, it, it takes care about everything, yes. So if your car is uh, just less than than the box, it it would show less. Yes. So that's that's very good with this uh, new uh, future, the physics engine. Okay. Now what I do now is, I make a little bit uh, of an environment, or, or I already created one. Thank you. I use these objects like I did uh, before. Uh, I showed before. You can just append them, and. 
you can put them together, extend them or, or whatever. You can create your uh, own track like I did here. I made uh, a looping or uh, a loop or how you, how you call it. This is a little bit hard if you want something to do like uh, with this. It, it did also, uh, you have to take care about the quality of the mesh because uh, in the game engine nothing will be smooth. So uh, you, every face or each line, that, that's a hard line. So when you have uh, an, a looping like the outline of this, it, it won't loop, it, it won't uh, be able to drive because it's going to each corner and flips. So we have to make it uh, quite deti uh, de detailed to, to make it look right. Even this gives uh, some problems. I could uh, deti uh, detail it a little bit more to make it more perfect. But, well, if you drive carefully, uh, it would work. <laughs> <laughs> what I also did is just some ramps to show you. I made a little wall here where, <laughs> where I can uh, smash against to take some boxes, trim here, and show you a little bit of what you can do with just simple setup of uh, a game. Okay. Oh, first I yes. it's, it, I find this uh, something a little bit strange because when you put this on, you will see uh, in front here uh, some artifacts. See? Yeah. So normally uh, I, I put it off, looks looks a lot better. Now you, you don't have the problem. Okay, so what I did, I s set it up. I hope it will be uh, fine to drive. I can see it. It's quite hard. See, but there is just a problem there before it goes down. I didn't make it deti uh, the detail enough to make it smooth. So that's one of the problems you could get. Uh, could get. You can fix that by just uh, giving no gas or something, but don't uh, push forward. Or just uh, reshape the complete, uh, complete mesh. So I did this. You see it being movable like this. And smash. So that's pretty cool. That, that's what the, the, ge the, the physics engine uh, can do with uh, driving games and, and everything. There are a lot of also uh, a lot of another features you can discover, like you can do uh, rigged bodies. You can make a, sh uh, an, a human out of shapes like uh, boxes or uh, spheres, and uh, make them linking together with uh, with a Python script. So when it drops, it drops like a real uh, person or something close to it. So th this is how. Uh, this is what I uh, did. This workshop, I will make it available online as well, so you can uh, just play around with it, and I will extend it in, in the future with uh, maybe uh, artificial intelligence, uh, some uh, complete track with uh, speed and everything. But this is just was just showing uh, what you can do with uh, the physics of uh, the current game engine. Um, are there some questions about this? Subject. Yes. Um, do you know about the logic bricks? Uh, some aren't supported in the bullet engine, I, I think. The? The armature? No, the, the logic bricks. They are. Um, the Sumo engine um, supports all logic bricks, yeah. which are visible. And uh, I think there are some missing in the bullet engine. Yeah, that, that, that is, that's. Uh, that's a problem where Erwin is uh, going to work on. I don't speak him uh, personally, but I, I know about his project and his project and I searched the forum. But in do, you, do you know which ones are actually supported? Um, I think almost everything except a few things like the armature support isn't supported because he, he still wants to... Uh, well, it supports, but... Um, well, I just take a look at which one is, isn't. Yeah, there are a lot of things like uh, currently the, the game engine. The game engine was uh, before it was quite full with problems, bugs, and everything. 
And now with the new physics engine, there's indeed uh, a few uh, things that don't work very well. Uh, like, uh, but sometimes it's just uh, to, to find a, ra a, ra a workaround. Like when you have, uh, you can use uh, actions to use uh, armatures. Mm -hmm. But what you had before with the sumo, you could uh, put an actor directly, di directly on uh, the mesh where an armature was on or something or on the armature yeah. without uh, going crazy. But when you do it now, it will now, uh, the, the, the actor will detect itself. So it will just uh, go crazy because it's detecting all the time uh, an armature and uh, that mesh. So what you have to do is, uh, yeah, it's a little bit strange, okay. but he's working on uh, on to make it work right with uh, characters. Also, when b before you could also make a character. Here you have. Uh, you can show you uh, this this actuator. You have a lot of things you can set here. Now it's done by a script. Okay, you can also do it uh, with these options, with force, uh, D log, and everything. But if you use uh, the rotating part, like you want to turn a character, yeah. in the current physics engine, it will just roll over instead of turning it. Yeah, there's also some issue that you have to rotate and uh, apply the rotation first. Yeah, I then, then it uh, works right. I, I think I read something about it. about the meshes. The when you uh, create a rotation. Rotation, yeah, rotation. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's also a problem with this script. I, I already fixed uh, a workaround, or well, well, it's not really a workaround. It's when uh, you have, um, I can show you uh, this, the wheels, I just made them like uh, facing this part towards, and all the sides are just black. And when I copied the, the mesh to the other side and just rotated and created everything, the script resets it back to its uh, original position. So what you have to do is go into uh, into edit mode and just rotate there the, the, the complete mesh. And that's that's one problem, yeah. Before, I think before it was uh, not a real problem, but Maybe with Sumo. You can apply really a rotational scale the way, yeah. while you have to object mode. Now you have a, uh, I don't remember the shortcut, but I think it's uh, control, control A. Yeah. Yes, control A to apply scale and rotation to the duplicated object. So he has, a, he resets, it resets the, the axis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you don't have to go back to edit mode. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but that's in, that's one indeed uh, one problem because when you create a correct uh, character, you want to work on. Uh, very nice scale, you know, not too big, not too, not too small, to model. And if you uh, apply to a game engine, like uh, let's say that this this cube is uh, one of our characters, and I change it like uh, this or something, and I will uh, add physics to it. Box. I think. It, oh, and 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 the shape. No. Shape of uh, the thing. Oh. Well, sometimes it will. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was it. Yeah, I was trying to uh, to archive. It. I think it was uh, just make it an actor first or whatever, or and you do this. And then change back. Oh, okay, now now it's doing right, but it could be that when you scale your character and you make the bound uh, exactly uh, around or in inside the, the the mesh, it could be that it still detects the old shape before you scaled it, and that's that could be a problem. So then you have to go into edit mode. Uh, Ch uh, change back uh, the scale and go outside and then scale it. Then it works. And uh, do you know this, uh, is Erwin here? Erwin? I don't think so. No. 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 Okay. I'm not sure, maybe uh, Tom knows, but. Yeah. Okay. 
So that, that's one thing you have to take care about as well. Someone else got a question? Or something you could do? Or Is it correct as uh, uh, read that uh, multi-texturing can now use in the game engine? Yeah. Multi-texturing, no. Well, yes, yeah, yes. Oh, about uh, the without graphics. Yes. Yeah. So um, without using shaders, just using normal multi -texturing. Yeah, you you can also uh, y there are uh, yeah. Because this we made a project first with the old engine that was a visualization of an architecture study, and um, we have big problems uh, using uh, radiosity and different textures and so on. And we just mm -hmm. put, uh, take some shapes like sh shadows should moving over the over the. Um, ground, yeah. so we use just faces they are near behind the, the ground uh, uh, and so we can move shadows with opening doors or something like this and this was a very missing thing so doing multi-texturing so. Yeah, there, there is a future to use multi-texturing but I think it was uh, using a script as well through no, or not yeah, you could also, I think it was just two options, I'm not sure, but something like that. But it is possible, but I'm not sure if you can animate it as well. Yeah, this is, that's the thing I'm missing much, is uh, animating textures in Blender or in, in rendering or in the game engine. And there's no way to just using um, a texture and animate it without mm -hmm. the, moving the mesh or modify the mesh, just moving the texture, or rotating it, whether it's rotating it or scaling it, something like this. Yeah, there there is something you can you can do. There is someone who uh, released uh, a script that um, makes uh, the, the texture on the mesh uh, movable. Yeah, but it's very slow. It's very slow. Yeah, it's, it's too it's slow when the object is complicated. It's too slow. It doesn't run very well. Yeah, very yeah. That's that's performance. That's uh, that is that is one of the problems in yeah. uh, the current game engine. So uh, I'm I'm not sure if they when they change it to uh, Ogre, or to put that uh, as a plugin inside it, if it fixed uh, the performance a little. I, I'm not sure about that. But, but multi texturing is now uh, you you can do that using materials, but about animating, I, I don't mm. I don't think so. Okay. But. This Or move the, the layer or not. What do you mean? Uh, when you do uh, script, yeah. yes, you can add objects on the flight online. Um, with move. Python scripting, you mean? Uh, when you activate a, a script, yeah. in a rendering, engine, you can add objects, new objects, or duplicate objects. With the scripting? Yes. Uh, no, not really. You can, you can, uh, currently you cannot. Uh, make something uh, what you you mean like loading external models inside your game with a script yeah no no it's not working right now it's like uh, everything that's just uh, in the game that's the only thing you can use you can you can't import uh, textures or or uh, models but what you can do is you can uh, create a mesh with uh, an amount of vertices and then create a script that uh, use those vertices to replace them. But you can uh, read a file. <laughs> hmm? You can read a file in the, uh, in the beginning of the program. You can read a file with a new uh, position of the objects or something similar. Um, so b that when you start the engine that everything is on its place? Something like that. Uh, yes, you, you, you can make, uh, what I did now is I made the script running always and you can also say when you, you start uh, the, the game that it just runs once. So uh, instead of always you could put uh, a property in there that says, uh, okay, when I run this I change the property to maybe uh, one and that keeps always in mind that the script is already run. So it's only one time that it runs. Or you can just uh, always you can also use always sensor, and the pulse mode is always on. You can just turn it off, and connect a script to it, and it will only execute one time. So in that script, you can put uh, all the, the objects on with position and everything on the, his place, 
and then when the game starts, just do replace everything, and then it's fine. How's how's the game exported out of Blender? Uh, to get. Uh, how do you how do you get it out of Blender for for some for someone to use it? Doesn't have Blender. Ah, okay. When when you create a game, uh, in you can save it as runtime files, so you can uh, just uh, make it executable. You can do that on Windows, on uh, Macintosh, on Linux. I think there was uh, just a little bit of problem in on Macintosh or something. But uh, when when you create a game like uh, I did with a car, I can just uh, load it here. You can uh, first of all you have the render options. You can set some values here, like uh, the screen size uh, or frame rate and everything even the, the bits. You can also control that with uh, um, with flags. So when you make a batch file you can start it using the, those options as well. So you can just type in arguments and when you start it it just loads the game with those settings. And when you have done that you can uh, save a runtime here. I can just show you. And I put it here and I say it's a uh, car and it saves a runtime. That, that that's basically uh, the way it works. But <coughs> so, but when you start it now, it will ask uh, some extra files. They are they won't uh, they are not included while saving as a runtime. So it will ask for some the uh, some files. So what you do is you go to um, the blender the blender map. And just find those uh, files who needs, and that's this one, probably this one, and the Python. Just copy them. You can just include them. Oh, I need another one. <laughs> I'm not sure how many I need. It changes every uh, release. Uh, no, you, you you can do it, but. Ah, here it is. So it's just look. Now it starts. You have to pack your files. Yeah. Your that that's something I uh, didn't uh, show. And blender materials don't work in runtime. Blender materials don't work in runtime. No. You have to use textures. You have to. I think uh, and and the shaders do they do also run in runtime? Hmm. Ah, that, that's something uh, I think will be uh, changed as well. But <laughs> I hope so <laughs> as well. You can always use Blender for publishing too. There was other stuff. You use the Blender, execute it, and make an other stuff. So when the file is loaded, um, so yeah. Make a batch. Use this. Use you, you rename it to my my game uh, exe and um, use this and uh, in with, um, as a command line the file which you like loaded mm -hmm. and set in the file to make it an auto start and so Blender starts loads the file and you have all features. So yeah. The player is a little bit tricky and sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you can you can ju ju just di disable uh, the complete layout and what I say just started uh, using Blender itself, but it works perfect that way or most times. You must load in the model and then start the engine, but uh, probably it does both at the same time. Yeah. And then it crashes. Uh, that's true. I think that's a problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, fix it in future. Yeah, well, the game engine is something they, they don't work uh, on a lot, only a few persons do. And it's it's something that's a little bit behind, but it's now uh, getting a little bit uh, upwards again by uh, almost uh, the upcoming integration or try uh, with the Augur, uh, Augur uh, graphics engine. And now with the Bullets engine, uh, there's... Uh, some uh, shader support, OpenGL shader support. So, well, it's getting a little bit better now, but I don't think it will be ever uh, that great as uh, Unreal uh, 3 engine or something. But it's uh, it's getting better now.
I see. Uh, I, th I think the, the future will be uh, better. But of course, we need a lot of people to uh, work on the engine, uh, to fix bugs, uh, to add uh, new features, or to make the old features available again. That's that's one of the problems. There's only right now there are two people uh, or three people working on it. Okay. <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> okay, that was it. That was the end uh, of the, the workshop of showing you uh, how to set up things. Um, I've got it on my. Oh, the, the, the script is already in uh, the preview files of uh, the physics as examples you can download from uh, the website. If I'm right, you can just go. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you very much <laughs> for being here. Okay, um, can you go to uh, download Blender? And everyone looks here, but here on on, to, on the lowest part, you can get. I think it was here. I mm -hmm. right hear.